for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Today is Tuesday, February 8, 2022, the time being 6.30 p.m. The meeting of the Greensburg City Council is called to order. At this time, please silence all electronic devices to comply with Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. The city requests that participants in this meeting complete a voluntary anonymous survey that is available on the table in the back of the room. Amy is unable to be with us this evening, so we have Julie Nobby with us. Julie, would you please call the roll? Jamie Kane? Here. Rick Emsweller? Here. Kevin Fleetwood? Here. Viata McKenzie? Here. Daryl Poling? Here. You all should receive a copy of the minutes for the public hearing January 11th. Any edits, additions, or corrections? Motion to approve. Motion's been made by Daryl. Is there a second? Second Seconded by Jamie. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed. You have the minutes for January 11th. Is there any edits, additions, or corrections? If not, take a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Motion's made by Rick. Seconded by Jamie. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed. Um, Sarah is unable to be with us this evening. Her and Kristen are representing the city at an event in Indianapolis. Um, Ron is here to talk about Ordinance 2022-01. This evening. is the second reading of that ordinance. The purpose of the amendment is to increase and clarify that where inspections are performed on building projects, if a reinspection is necessitated by incomplete or incorrect work, there would be a charge of $100 per reinspection. The amount hasn't changed. It's just a clarification that reinspection should something be inaccurate. Yes. And the inspector have to go back. Yes. Or perhaps because the contractor wasn't ready with the work as advertised and we incurred the cost of our inspector going to that site. And that cost goes to the uh, property owner, not the contract. Is that correct? Contractor, is that correct? It goes to the permit holder. I, just, I think, I, I, I just feel the hundred dollars is, is just too steep. Opinion. Um, I have a question on that. So you're saying that you, they're, they guess what, set up an appointment? If they um, call for an inspection, yes. So they call for the inspection. They don't go out, you do, it's not something that's agreed upon at a certain time. Um, I mean, what if it get, has to get pushed back? Um, I'm, if there is communication and the inspector isn't sent to the site, then that would not be considered a reinspection when he went back when things were in order and ready for his inspection. Was there something in particular that took place that has kind of... I don't know that I am the one to answer Sarah, that okay. question. What Sarah had mentioned, I think, last month was we were constant, we were having several issues where people were calling for an inspection, they were failing the inspection, and then the inspector would have to come back out, re-inspect it before it could be approved again. Okay. And so though we had a significant number of re-inspections, and so we were still paying our inspector for every inspection, okay. but we weren't recouping that cost. All right, and, uh, okay, so then I remember I'm making the comment last month that I want to make sure that these people know this coming in, that they're aware that they're going to be charged every single time and not just sprung on them. Oh, we, you know what I mean? The, we certainly, I think. The communication needs to be there. I think the thing that concerns me is if you're using a contractor and the contractor says this is ready for inspection, and then the inspector is called in and you fail. I mean, I don't know. I guess it would fall back on the property owner to, since he's a permit holder, but. But if you hire a contractor, the contractor is going to be the permit. They're going to apply to the permit as part of the contract. Usually, but he's going to 
put that back in your yeah. But I see both sides. I know where the city's coming from. They ask who your contractor's going to be. And, and this is fresh on my mind because I just went through a, a remodel. Mm -hmm. And getting the permit, I bought the permit, and then they asked who the contractor was going to be. And that's as far as the, as far as I know, that's as much as the contractor was involved in. One of the things that will happen with time is contractors that don't perform to code and incur many reinspections, I think will soon not have a lot of work if the owner ends up incurring a cost for the inadequate performance of that contractor. And I want to make perfect, perfectly clear that that did not happen in my case. I don't want somebody to get bad press. <laughs> but that did not happen in my case, but I can see where it could happen. Questions for Ron on the topic? <coughs> if not, would entertain a motion to approve 2022-01 on second and final reading. Second. Motions made by Kevin, seconded by Jamie. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. Uh, motion carries four to one. Thank you, Ron. You're welcome. Councilman Fleetwood. Um, in December, you had asked for the Washington Township trustee uh, to appear um, in December. That was that did not happen. In January, it was on the agenda. No appearance. Um, you asked for it to be placed back on the agenda. It is under old business. The floor is yours. Thank you much. It's more of a discussion and informative. Um, the two new trucks we have from Washington Township, it was brought to my attention by one of the firemen they didn't meet the NFPA 1901 standard for the uh, Chevron design on the back of the trucks. I want to make perfectly clear, there is no law requirement. It's a, it's a standard. And I guess, but since we have city employees drive in driving these trucks, riding in these trucks, I guess I wanted to get the opinion of the other council members on where they think we should go with this. Should these trucks meet that standard for safety? since city employees are in them? Am I the only one that thinks that? And if we all think that they should meet that standard, what type of mechanism do we put in place or could we put in place that could uh, uh, ensure that if we have future vehicles coming from like this, that before, and if there's a task force put together talking about the design of the trucks and if there's a color scheme that they want that doesn't meet that standard, should they bring that to the city for approval before they proceed with it, since city employees will be in them? The NFPA is the National Fire Protection Association. Correct. Uh, for those council members or audience that don't know. Um, and so you're inquiring about whether we want to become an NFPA agency. No, no, no. The whole document's 216 pages, and it touches on a whole bunch of different points. I'm more, the discussion here is about the design of the chevrons that go on the back of the vehicles during activity and from a safety standpoint how these trucks stand out because when you get behind a truck that's got the yellow and the yellow chevron and they stand out, the truck, the two trucks in question, they're black and red and I'm telling you following those trucks they don't really stick them out. They, they are hard to see. I've, I've been behind one at night and it just doesn't stand out like a truck would that met that standard for the Chevron design. I mean, just a few things. I think what I, in my understanding, the chief can correct me if I'm wrong. I believe those Chevrons do meet the reflectivity requirement of, of the standard. They're just a different style. And I agree that maybe they don't, they're not quite as reflective as the other style. They don't I, meet the NFP 1901. but NF ANSI standard, sorry. But in the NF, NFPA 1901, there is um, verbiage that if they don't meet this standard, they do need to meet the ASTM standard for relef, reflectivity. I don't know if they meet it or not. It would be a good question to get answered. Do you know, Chief? They do not. ASTM standard Chief. Chief. Oh, that's right. <coughs> right 
Please approach the podium and state your name for the record. The ASTM standard that uh, is referenced in this NFPA 1901 document does not list black at all as a um, uh, reflectivity material. In talking with uh, an individual who does our graphic striping, uh, there are two types of black reflective. There is one that has glass bead in it, one that does not have glass bead in it. That does not have glass bead in it. The, the black that is on the side of our pickup trucks for Greensburg Fire does have a glass bead in it, which increases the re reflectivity of that. Uh, ASTM states it has to have, I believe it's a minimum of 10 with that, and black with glass bead is supposedly rated at 10. Uh, but the ASTM document that NFPA 1901 references does not list black at all as even an option. And there was a, so somebody signed off that they approved on this, right? Because the, the truck manufacturer made a specific sign off requiring that we signed off on this modification. So anytime that there is a, and I have yet to see it, I have yet to find it, I don't know if Kevin has, has through due diligence has found that. It is industry standard that when you purchase a truck that is not NFPA compliant, that, that someone from that organization or the purchaser has to sign off saying that they know that NFPA, that it, that truck is not NFPA compliant. So while, while it is a standard and is not law, fire truck manufacturers do not want to be held liable for anything that happens to that. So they bill to those standards. Um, and if you choose not to have the required amount of ground ladders or you choose not to have seat belts or you do, seat belts now have to be red. If you want black seat belts, the material instead of red, that is an exemption that, that you have to sign off on. Same thing goes for, it has to be, most of them, them can, they can be purchased non-lettered um, from the manufacturer and that could be why we no one can seem to find this document. Maybe they were purchased unlettered, so that would not go in there. But if they would been, have been lettered at the factory, then there would have there there would have had those things in place, um, saying that they are not compliant with NFPA. And again, that's just a liability thing, taking it off the manufacturer and putting it onto the end user. So I mean, I guess my, my thought. <clears throat> I agree with what you're saying, Kevin. Is I think that we ought to have a representative from the council, even though the council didn't purchase these trucks. They're, you know, our employees are operating these trucks. We're the ones insuring the trucks, right? Maintaining the trucks. We should have had a seat at the table for for this going forward. We need to have a representative on that committee. Would be my recommendation, I guess. And then that way we could have these discussions. At least we have somebody on this council that can represent those discussions when we have have questions come up. I guess my concern is if if these are the NFPA, is that what you say? Mm -hmm. If this is their standards, why on earth would we sign off if we indeed did? Why would we sign off on something that's less safe? I, that makes no sense to me. Any Any business or employer wants the safest, most up-to-date equipment. Safety is number one. That's my friend right here. Uh, so that, that, is, that is a concern. We asked for these modifications. So this wasn't the builder that asked. The builder, is my understanding, planned to do it under the NFPA. Okay. Right. We asked for these modifications as, a, as a, our subcommittee or group that specced out the trucks. That committee asked for that modification. But my concern is, is if I understood Chief correctly, he's saying that uh, if they do not meet those standards, then the uh, the one who made the truck. Correct. They're going to take. Ask, they're yeah, going to take your money no matter what. Legally. If you're willing to spend six hundred thousand dollars on a fire truck, they're going to take your money. Right. You're going to sign saying, "Hey." We told you it needed to be this way, and you said, I'm going to do it this way. So if that's a concern way, to them. That's a common industry practice, but it is about making fire trucks and in, in that, in that money. Um, it happens all the time. Sometimes they're big things, like things that are, are obviously seen, and other times it's small, just administrative things that are minuscule <coughs> when it comes to um, the, the building of, a, of an apparatus. How do we fix it? 
Are you asking me? They're not our property. And I think that that's where we need to be careful with the word we. Is I, this board, this unit of government didn't purchase those trucks. I do believe this predates me and you, Correct. but I do believe there was firefighter representation. There was. There but was. But they were not an official decision making body. And that's tough to say. Um, there was an apparatus committee, um, but again, I kind of walked into some of that. Um, the The easiest way to do that, and again, is they're not our property, but is the easiest way to, to remedy this and the, the probably the most cost effective way is to request that they be changed to fluorescent yellow and red. Um, I, I would say that, but again, Chris, if I'm wrong, it has to be done as a request, correct? Because we, since we do not, those trucks are basically loaned to us via the contract that they provide equipment, but we maintain it. So it would have to be a request from the council to change that, that could be accepted or denied. Yeah, I don't, I know that the current version of the fire service contract between Washington and Washington Township who own the trucks and Greensburg is, the, is just the automatic renewal version of the one that, that was ultimately decided on a few years ago. A year and a half ago, I'd, yeah. I'd have to go back and look at the details of it, but I do believe that it's correct. The apparatus is owned by Washington Township. It was paid for by Washington Township. It is their property. As part of the contract, Greensburg gets the opportunity to utilize that, that apparatus, and it goes on the books. And there is, I believe, some amount of liability shift in terms of, of maintenance and, and that We do sort of pay thing. preventative maintenance. Large maintenance issues, if like it would be the trucks out of service or a catastrophic failure, would be uh, paid for by Washington Township. But preventative maintenance, brakes, oil changes, small things like that, those fees are incurred by the city of Greensburg. And I do not think that there is a, as I recall it, again off the top of my head, I do not recall there being any specification of requirement to comply with NFPA standards in the Design or construction. I don't believe that that contract gets that deep or in depth. I don't think it does either. Um, so, so two questions. I mean, to answer the immediate question of well, how would you fix it, is I think you'd go back and ask them if they would fix it, and then the answer is going to be yes or no. I mean, that's that's kind of the choice. In terms of what um, Councilman Fleetwood said earlier, in terms of how do you prevent that. It may be that you do add language of that level of specificity to future versions of that contract that says, to the extent that you're providing us with a vehicle or you're providing us with a piece of apparatus, it must meet these applicable standards, um, you know, in order for us to utilize the tree soon begin continued for maintenance. Um, the thing you're going to want to be very cognizant of, and I would certainly advise all of you to consider deeply, is these aren't the only two trucks on there, and I'm not sure if all your trucks meet this, but you know, you gotta, you gotta be conscious of the fact that if I'm gonna hold that standard to that truck, I can almost guarantee you when you go ask somebody in Washington Township to pull their pocketbook out, they're gonna say, great, prove to me that every one of your other trucks meets the NFPA standards too. I think the concern though is these are brand new trucks. We just, we just got them. Why wouldn't we make sure we're doing the right thing going forward? I, and I get it. I, I hear what you're saying, but why, why buy something brand new that we know doesn't meet the regulation, right? So, but, uh, I think we can make the ask, right? I don't know if we need to do that in a formal resolution or just a I vote think from the it, council asking. How do you? Is that the council's wish to request a change, or do you want to? think about it for the next month or, or is there more to the discussion? Well, I'd like to know about these other trucks. What about them? Are, do they all meet standard? Currently to my knowledge they all meet the applicable standard when they were they were constructed. So there, there's a new standard that comes out every three years so it's ever evolving. Um, but in my two years that I've been here um, 
every one of those trucks has the required equipment and um, the, the, the things that are required through NFPA. Um, sometimes it ends up costing more to make it that way, but it's also a, a liability that's removed if they are. Um, it only covers apparatus and, and ambulances. It does not cover any of our pickup trucks. Um, however, um, the new rescue truck that we just refurbished and, and just substantially completed, it has fluorescent lime and, and red chevrons on the back of it, as well as safety cameras and the applicable lights and everything else like that. If we're going to do it, we're going to do it right when we start it. Um, even our small pickup trucks, um, technically it has to be 51% covered in back of, of uh, chevroning. And um, those are at least made an attempt to get some type of um, reflective warning sign on there. Um, I will say that we do have black striping on our side, and that's kind of been what's newly been adopted. Um, but that graphic is only on the side, not on the rear. I would not compromise the rear only because those trucks run on the interstate. Um, and that's a, a large portion of um, responder fatalities happen on the interstate. It's a dangerous place to be, especially um, when the weather gets dicey like it was a couple weeks ago. Um, we will, unless instructed by the council, we will most likely continue to use a glass bead black striping down the side um, with, our, with our gold leaf um, that has, you know, been in the department for, for numerous years. Um, but again, the back's um, something that's seen and, and used for traffic alerting um, will will be what the what the standard requires or what the standard recommends um, just because in my years of service I found it that it is more effective um, to have those two very bright and somewhat god awfully colors um, but they're doing their job that's what they're there for does that answer your question yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, I think that maybe uh, I mean said we didn't buy the trucks um, so maybe we need to find out if I really like to know if there was something signed off. If the if the <clears throat> the people who built the trucks, you know, gave them this information and they opted to go in a different direction, and they made them sign off on that. I would really like to know if that document. Mm -hmm. I think that's part of Kevin's request yeah. too, and that's why he's asked for the Washington Township trustee to be here for December, January, February. So three months now and he's not showing up. So, um, and, and they're in there, and I will say that again, it could be that nobody signed off because if they did order the truck with zero graphics on it whatsoever, and that was done by a third party, there would not be any type of document being signed. So I do want to. There is a chance that we haven't found anything because there is nothing. Um, so that that does exist. There, that possibility does exist. Um, Ultimately, at the end of the day, it doesn't change what's on there currently. Who pays for the insurance on the trucks? Uh, the trucks are, I submit the information to um, our insurance agent as far as who's paying for them. I believe we, we the city of Greensburg, or, or do they? No, I believe the city. I believe we are the insured. We, we, we insure the truck. I'm doing this from memory. We insure the trucks. But we are reimbursed for the insurance cost to cover the trucks because okay. they fit on our policy because it is cheaper to have the bigger policy. One additional question I would have then is that even though this standard's not law and it's a recognized standard that a lot of most organizations follow, <coughs> would the insurance rates be different on these trucks since they don't meet the standard versus trucks that do meet the standard? they don't meet the standard if there was an issue how would the insurance company <coughs> move forward yeah. basically what's our liability if it was in an accident i have asked that before and, and not not received an answer i have asked that question <coughs> any further any further discussion on this topic i think we should ask for the additional reflective uh, equipment on the back of the truck. If they're not going to pay for it somehow, some way, uh, that needs to happen. I think we, we, we need to pull out all the stops on this. I would really hate to see <coughs> that happen. 
because someone did not see a fire truck on the interstate and God forbid run into the back of it and there be a not so good ending. <clears throat> Yeah, we can send a letter um, to the township and ask that that, which has been brought to our attention, to review it and provide our opinion of what and request of what should be done and see if they respond. <coughs> that the direction we're headed for now. At the start. Yeah. New start. <coughs> I guess the other piece of that then is if we're going to have an apparatus committee in the future. Maybe I'd like to see that we add a member of the council to that committee. So it doesn't hurt uh, we, to have that. we do have apparatus, uh, an apparatus committee. Um, some of those members are actually currently in, in contact with the Washington Township trustee uh, in replacement of our um, brush wildland apparatus. Um, so that is that is currently going, and then we are in the um, somewhat middle stages of the um, aerial device that would be purchased by the city. So if there is a representative that wants to be on that, I'm willing to loop you in <coughs> where we've come. Um, those decisions have been made um, by committee and then run through me. Um, I have taken, I guess, more of an active role um, than what I what I did when I began uh, on apparatus to make sure that you know issues are tried to address or risk management is taken prior to uh, delivery instead of post delivery. And I do think in the contract it needs to say that it's got to be in FPA compliant before the city will accept. I'll refer to, to legal counsel to make those changes. Currently, we're operating on a contract that just rolls right, over. Um, so we would have to basically, if I'm speaking out of turn here, Chris, let me know. We'd have to terminate that contract and then sign a new one, correct? If they want to add that, that trucks. Uh, say, if you want to. If you want to add it for the, like, if you want to add it right now for the current contract, then yeah, I guess you'd have to go through the process of terminating, but you could simply just add it and modify it and not, not do the automatic renewal next year. So, I mean, you just calendar it out that between now and I think it's like 60 days or something like that. So, right budget down, time, I, maybe. I would take count. I mean, I, I, yeah, I would remove myself from that as much as possible so I'm not in, in the thick of this. Um, and that take. contract also has the monetary amount that the township will pay for fire support rights. So Correct. whatever that amount is, that contract it never gets reviewed. It always gets automatically rolled to the same number. It's one hundred and twenty thousand a year. But it'll automatically roll at one hundred twenty. Automatically roll at one hundred twenty. Automatically roll at one hundred twenty. That's we pay our fire more and more and more each year. It was one hundred and forty. It's went down twenty thousand. Oh, I thought we said didn't. No, it was one hundred and forty. It went to one hundred and twenty. Okay. It went down. I'm not bitter about that. I roll over a monetary amount automatically uh, without being I'm not bitter about that at all. So we had really I mean, it's, it's certainly something, I mean, if you're, are you asking me to terminate your current fire service contract with the Boston Township? Is that council or is that more works? More more works. It's a more works. works decision. Yeah. But it's certainly something that, that there is a provision, there is a timing provision in it that if you don't want it to automatically renew, there is a step to take so that it doesn't automatically renew and then you can renegotiate every single line if that's what you want to do. Surely this is something we could have a discussion with them and maybe draft a, an amendment to it without having to go through a whole, maybe we could make a slight <coughs> amendment to it if everybody agrees and then we can. Not to mention the fact that you're, you're, you're at the end of your and watch the township trustee and he hasn't, he's not running again. So you're going to have a new trustee come November 2nd. What's the time frame on this brush truck? <laughs> um, the brush truck is, uh, he wants it completed before he's out of office. I know they are in the process of getting quotes and selecting a manufacturer. So I would say it's more than halfway done. I'm, I'm trying to be briefed on that um, as much as I can. Um, you know what I know currently. Well, what I may suggest, if I, if I, if I may, to you is it might be 
legally smoother for you to just add a council member to your apparatus committee and make sure that the apparatus committee signs off on this truck now that you have all expressed to that member your requirement, like your intention that you want this to meet NFPA standards for this particular truck and then as you get closer to the October, November time period to renegotiate your contract, then add it as a specific provision uh, at that renegotiation point. Rather than going through the process of terminating and then renegotiating right now. Somebody want to volunteer to be on that committee? Okay. Good. What's that? Come, come to the fire training days. Um, okay. Any other? So we will do two things. One, Jamie will be on the apparatus committee. Thank you, Chief. I know that that's not your um, burden, but thank you for the information. And then we will send a formal letter requesting the move to compliance. We answer about the insurance. And the insurance. Julie, you got all that? Can you verify that we've actually been recoup we've recouped that money from the insurance? I know that we paid the insurance. I just I had not seen or was not aware that we were recouping that money. Okay. okay. Anything else? Okay. Um, under new business, we have Greg Fox with us from Dunn and Associates. Kathy Dunn is also here too. They've provided you a one-page sheet for the medical plan um, review from last year. Good evening, Greg. Thank you for joining us. All right. yep. Thank you, everyone. Yes, just wanted to use this kind of one page to give you an overview of not only 2021, but maybe a little history as well. Um, Dunn and Associates was brought on <coughs> five years ago. I believe you were with Anthem at that time. I think you were facing a renewal of 2.1. If you look at the top section of the chart there, you'll see year by year what your costs were. Starting on the left, you see admin fees. That's basically our fees to administer the plan. In the green column there, that's primarily reinsurance. So even though you are a self-funded plan, you're, you're partially self-funded. So you pay the claims that are incurred, but you also purchase reinsurance to protect you know, the budget and the financial aspects of the plan. Columns C and D there, you'll see what your actual claims were for each year. So you, column C is the medical, and column D is the prescriptions. Since we're talking about column D, I'll point out that last year when we were here in front of you, um, we talked about some changes to the prescription program. We did a specialty exclusion which required the patient to apply for patient assistance, which most people do, and that could drastically reduce the cost to the plan on the specialty drugs. You know, those are getting very expensive. Some of those are, you know, we see it's common for those to be in the $20,000, $30,000 range. So you can see with the highlighted number there in the column D that your pharmacy spend in 2019 was 234,000, 2020, 220,000, and then because of the change in the prescription program, you know, you're down to 145 this past year. So we would view that as that program is working for you. In column E, there you have um, total plan cost. So that's basically adding the fixed cost plus the claims, but there's no reinsurance reimbursement. So I wanted to show you that column because that's basically what's happening underneath the reinsurance behind the scenes and you can kind of see the costs are creeping up there and if you skip over to column g in red those are your reinsurance reimbursements so you can see each year either one individual or as usually the case triggered a specific claim so in the past the city has been responsible for the first sixty thousand of claims for any one individual and that includes a, an employer or a dependent. And then there's also protection on the top of the plan, which we call, I guess I call it an umbrella type policy, so that if you've had a really bad claims year across a large number of people, maybe no one hit specific, but you just had a lot of illness, then you have protection on the basically the budget for that. Okay. 
So if we look down column G, you'll see that in 2017, 127,000 was reimbursed by your reinsurer. And then by the time we got to 2019, it was 408,000. 2020, 804,000. So that year, you really received more back from the reinsurance carrier than you paid in premium, probably both those years. And then 2021 was down from the 800, but it was still a pretty high year. So these big claims are typically due to, you know, they could be heart conditions, they could be cancers, you know, those big claims that are unexpected. We can't really choose who has those or doesn't have those. They just occur. So over the course of the last five years, your reinsurance has paid about two million dollars of <coughs> So I focused on that a little bit just to say, you know, when we came to the renewal meeting this year, number one, we, we kind of do the budget for the health insurance in the middle of the summer. So we really don't have a, a full year. But I think we anticipated, you know, in that 2.2 to 2.5 range for a budget. And then as it turned out, the last three or four months of the plan year were, were pretty high months. I mean, they were up or two, almost 200,000 each month the last four months. If you, yeah, and then go to column H. So column H is really what I would say hits the county's bottom line, because that's your actual incurred claims minus the reinsurance, so that's the net of everything. So I mentioned earlier, you know, we probably started Five years ago, replacing an anthem plan at 2.1. Here we are five years later at 2.288. So, you know, when we look at a lot of plans <coughs> where they've trended up 10% a year, every year, I mean, you guys have really stayed pretty, pretty level, but you're a smaller group, so you will have those ups and downs. So that's why you see one year at 1.7 and one year at 1.4, then 2.1, so it, it does, it could vary significantly just because of a couple large claims. So what this means with the reinsurance being reimbursed, when we came to the renewal meeting, um, we had been with the same reinsurance carrier for five years. And every year, it's our job to basically go out to market, go to several underwriters for reinsurance claims, and get quotes. So even though we've been the administrator for five years in a row, I mean, you had your plan shopped in the market every year. Um, this year, we actually had to make a change, and we actually made two changes. One, we changed the reinsurance carrier um, because the claims had gone up. They were gonna increase the fixed cost, which we know we would have had to pay by about $200,000. And we were actually able to take that to market and find the best quote that would be about 42,000 above where you were last year. So we don't like to make a change every year because moving every year means less people are interested in, in quoting, uh, but it's something we do to try to keep everything honest. Okay. So I guess I wanna now point you to the graph itself. So what I've kind of outlined there, the blue section, that, well, the orange section is where your actual costs were. And then there's a trend line that looks yellow and then you have the blue claims, or the blue section, which are reimbursed by the reinsurance <coughs> carrier. And then that total cost is kind of trended at the blue line. So when I see that the, the blue line's starting to go a little steeper than your orange line there, I mean, that tells me that you're really having some underlying claims happening, even though your budgets stay pretty, pretty flat and pretty contained. So. Just something to keep in mind now because you know we'll have to talk budget in the middle of summer and you know we'll have updates every month as to where the plan's going but just be prepared to know that you know we're seeing things shift that way any questions on that all right so new for 2022 a couple of things I, I want to mention um, you know every year when we come you know, this probably starting in the next month or two, we will probably start to talk about doing some things with the health plan, do just discussion initially, and then, you know, if we decide to move a certain direction, um, or you decide to move a certain direction, we can. But we'll look at plan design, we'll look at employee contributions, we look at um, 
things like working spouse rules. We looked at the drugs last year. All those things are fair discussions to have, just to see how we can kind of help the plan stay within within budget and keep it a, a benefit for the employees that they can afford and, and have a good plan. So you know, everything comes into that discussion. Uh, there's a new tool that we're going to have here in, probably at the end of the first quarter, um, something that really hasn't been out there for an independent plan before. So right now, when everybody goes for health care, when do you find out how much it costs? It's usually 30 days after you get done with the procedure. You get an EOB in the mail that says, oh, the doctor charged this and the plan paid this. So new legislation came in place for January 1. It's called the Transpar uh, Transparency and Coverage Act and the No Surprises Act. And all this was geared towards helping the patients know what costs are before they go. And it's also gonna help people know where the better care is, or better price for care and the better care. So right now, you know, we know everybody has Amazon, you have the Gas Buddy app where you can see where different gas stations have their prices. This is basically gonna be an app that every employee is gonna have on their phone that would say, if you're going to have an MRI, if, if you go to Decatur Memorial, it will be this price. If you go somewhere else or say to Margaret Mary, you know, it'll be that price. So people will actually start to be able to see now how much something will be and cost them before they go have that service. So over the next couple of years, you know, that data is going to fill in. We even think hospitals will probably at some point change the way they price. Right now, everybody prices, well, this is your bill charge, but we give certain discounts, and there's a big discount game that gets played. Once, I think, apps and awareness is out there, no hospital is going to want to be the most expensive provider of care. So we think over time the whole market will change. And it, just like technologies with COVID's embedded, you know, people start doing Zoom meetings and everything like that. You know, this coming on at this time, I think, will start to take off because Everybody has phones now, um, and good phones. So that's something we're looking forward to. And it's it's something that the mayor mentioned to me the first month we met when he came in office. Um, at that time, you know, a carrier like an Anthem had that because they had all their pricing, and a United Healthcare had it because they had their pricing. But it was really tough to get something like this on the independent side because all the PPOs considered their pricing as proprietary. So this legislation kind of broke down that barrier and said, no, you need to disclose your um, pricing. So that's that's kind of what's making this possible. And your employees got this for their prescriptions last year. So they were able to actually see how much a prescription was at any independent pharmacy or the hospital, CVS, and help them uh, control their prescription costs. So, all right, uh, anything? Questions? Greg and Kathy. Anything you want to add to that? Well, let's do this. I'm going to ask the audience if I can and the council. Okay, if you said, hey, I need an MRI on my knee, where should I go? Okay, and you did this little app and it says, if you go to here, it's going to cost you out of your pocket $500. If you go over here, it's going to cost you $2,500. Would you be willing to drive 0.9 miles, less than a mile away, to get it, to save that much money? Anybody? This is rural Greensburg, Indiana. You're going to drive farther than nine tenths of a mile to get anywhere. I, I know. <laughs> I'm giving the example on the back of the page here. This is not not fishers, not caramel. This is rural Indiana. Kathy. Okay, but Kathy. here, focus here. But here's the thing: um, many of people, city of Greensburg, they see physicians in Columbus, or they have specialists that come over here from Columbus, they end up having surgery in Columbus. If you knew it would cost you more out of your pocket, would you be interested in that information? Some people would be, okay? Maybe it's better if you stay here at Decatur County Memorial. <clears throat> Same thing with the TrueRx app that you have right now. If you look up lisinopril, 
It's a few dollars at one pharmacy here in town. It's, say it's two dollars and some odd cents, but at one of the drug stores here in town, it's $48, same prescription. This is out of your pocket. So what's gonna change in the future is more information available. <coughs> Totally agree with the comment, hey, we're in Greensburg, we're gonna stay here, okay. But it might make a difference how much you spend out of your pocket, okay? So when we talk about the cost is going up for healthcare, we might need to be better consumers. And there could be plan design changes or incentives. Maybe we waive your deductible if you'll go here or here, and yes, Driving and convenience is a big factor. Quality is also a big factor. So these apps are gonna be bringing that information to light. How do we use it? You know, that's a great question. I don't have an answer for you, but I think it's, in somewhat, it's gonna be exciting to find out what we can do with it and where we go from here. So I think we'll be talking with the mayor and um, some staff as to how we can use this in a positive way and hopefully save individuals money out of their pockets. Okay? So it's gonna be it's gonna be different. It's something that's been um, as Greg mentioned, we've talked about for a couple of years. I worked with one of the first versions when I was at the state uh, on their health insurance stuff. Any questions for Greg or Kathy? Their teams do a great job for us um, annually with preparing the reports and, and we stay in pretty frequent communications. Well, like I mentioned last month, we'll probably put together some type of insurance committee. Um, so if that, somebody on here wants to serve on that, um, we'll be talking about that kind of stuff uh, going forward as well. We did talk about the app at the um, mandatory handbook training that we did back in November and talked about that exact same example of you know taking a more responsible effort into reducing what we're paying in insurance cost uh, to individual places as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Up next, Chief Sturmer, you've got an update from the fire station task force. Uh, good evening once again. Um, in your package, you should find basically um, the members of the task force, what we've been up to in the past um, two meetings. Um, some basic decisions that have been made um, that it is reasonable and, and, and long-term cost-effective to move off the Ireland Street property um, and onto a new site with a new station. Um, most other information is, is detailed within the packet. Um, I, am, I spoke with the uh, Board of Works earlier and um, allowed them to ask questions um, that they may have, um, and Glenn spoke, Glenn is a member of our board and also spoke um, to them about the unanimous decision of the, of the task force or the, the subcommittee there that we have for that. Um, and, and so you know, we have a proposal for architects ready to go to begin looking at what the station might potentially look like and hopefully select from a, a few architects um, who puts together the best product um, that we can then work with closer into making our, our dreams become reality. So with that, um, I'm really here tonight to ask for a, a vote of confidence um, to move forward um, with allowing the station task force to um, look at land negotiation, um, release the request for proposals um, for um, architectural firm as well um, if you would also move forward with the delivery method of build, operate, and transfer, uh, release those at the same time as BOT has to be advertised um, twice within the paper, seven days apart. If I get a vote of confidence to that, that would kind of allow us to move forward and take the next steps um, as we meet. Our next meeting is, uh, is on Monday. Um, so we, we meet probably once a week or once every two weeks as, as things are, are moving forward. Um, but with this, um, vote of confidence, it would allow us to do that um, as well as we might have to um, look at a nominal fee for design services to render conceptual drawings. Um, there is some money in the general obligation bond that was approved 
kind of that spending plan was there was, I believe, some design service fees in there, as well as beginning, since it is a new year, um, we have some money in our, our, line, or our general budget, fire department budget, that we could, um, at, with, with, within reason, uh, absorb some of those costs as well. Can I entertain any questions? I would uh, ask that uh, Kevin or Rick, um, since you guys serve on that committee, if you have anything to add or may or if anything that I've missed or, or added or um, questions of others to, uh, to be done. Hopefully we're, we're trying to keep everybody in the loop as we, as we move forward with this. It is sort of a fast moving project. Um, so we wanna make sure that everybody is staying um, at least somewhat um, up to page with it. There are some documents in your packet that are basically for information only as we move forward. The, the chief's request tonight does come with, at that, allow us to move that direction. Obviously this body still has to approve um, the bond, which would obviously green light the whole project, but we've got to take more steps towards that to get all of that figured out. Um, so that's really the request. There still is a emergency stop um, down the line. We've done, yeah, we've kind of done all we can do, due diligence wise without kind of taking that next step, but we want your approval to do that. <clears throat> 